Hi, everybody. It's a wee bit of alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. Today, we're going to return to a topic which has appeared several times in our conversations. And uh, probably most recently, about six months ago, but that's the, the qua and the yao. And clarifying what those terms mean and addressing some issues that have come up. Some people have been mentioning uh, specific situations where they're not quite sure how to activate this in in, in a way that allows for a, an effective transfer of power and uh, and substantiality. So I think uh, it'd be good to to go over some of that again, do a review, and it's something that I think needs to be talked about often, much more often than I do it on this talk, but the uh, it's something that unless you have someone there to check your math, you're probably going to backslide on this one just because it is kind of weird in terms of the way we ordinarily move. And so just first of all, to define what the the qua is, it and its most specific would be, uh, we're talking about the hip joint itself. And so the... Um, my body is here, right, right here. It's where the where the femur comes up and takes a a, a hard right in this case, and and there's a ball joint which uh, actually goes up up this way and then goes in this way. So it, there's a ball joint that fits into my pelvis, and that ball joint is rotational, and so that allows me to to lift my leg, to be able to move to the side, to turn it and do all kinds of cool stuff that, that a ball joint allows you to do. And so we're talking about the quad specifically, we're talking about the hip joint, but more generally it's this whole area here. That is the, not just the, the, the bones that are fitting together with a, a nice little piece of cartilage there to, to keep it from rubbing too much, but we're talking also about uh, you know the muscles, tendons, ligaments, connective tissue uh, that support that, plus all the other peripheral stuff that goes in there, how it's you know getting blood flow and uh, the nerves attached to it, et cetera. So that whole area here. And we're talking about primarily the way that my leg bone connects to my torso. So it's right here at the uh, the inguinal crease. So this place, there's a, a, a diagonal here where the, the, the thigh meets the, meets the torso. That's the, your inguinal crease. And that, that fold there is the dividing line. That, that is the kind of indicates the pivot point around which the qua is operating. So we were kind of focused on this on this this area as we do that, and so that so that's that's the the qua. And when we talk about lots of ways to talk about it, um, but you know some people talk about opening and closing, and so opening would be to to move this way so that the qua is the inguinal crease is getting bigger, the that that separate or closing, which means that it's if the legs are coming together. So there's open, close. And so whenever I turn to my right here, I'm, I'm on my right leg, I turn to my right, I'm, I'm necessarily closing down this, you know, and then if I turn to the left, it's, it's opening up. So that's, that's one way to talk about it. I like to think of it in terms of, of am I releasing or tightening that area? Am I, you know, am I, activating it or am I letting it go? And so whenever I am releasing down into it, there's a, a softening of the tissues there. Everything gets really soft and mushy and that, uh, uh, that allows the energy to flow very, very quickly. If I'm activating, if I you want to use this area to, to express power, then there is a, a lengthening of the tissues there as I activate my connective tissue system, and that, that causes a tremendous amount of power to be projected through that. So that's the, uh, 
that's the, the Kwa story. The Yao, Y-A-O, is uh, this area right here, your, your lower back, your sacrum. That uh, And so what we're doing is, this is the yang part of the equation. This is what drives the, drives the bus. We focus on this and it, we turning and, and that is, is opening and closing the qua. So the qua can be thought of as the yin part. That is the receptive part and the yao being the driver. So we're moving and energizing from that yao to create motion. In this case, usually it's a rotational motion. And this generates a tremendous amount of, of effective power, but also gives you a lot of stability. And that's one of the things that um, is kind of counterintuitive because at a very primal level, we tend to tighten up that area as a way of protecting ourselves. So we there is a pre-conscious mandate stress response that says, it's safer if you tighten up, Rick. And so it, it clamps down and there is less motion there in the quad, which you know, at that really primitive level, my body mind says, oh, we're safe now. But the reality is we're, we're not. That's uh, actually working counter to an effective use of my body. So I say, no, we're, we're going to kind of soften this area now. And we're, we're going to move into a whole body connection to your body. And, and that, um, that changes the equation. So, but whenever you're learning to use the qua efficiently, you're gonna bump into this stress response. You're, it's gonna wanna clamp down, particularly if you are in a situation where you're starting to challenge your sense of balance. When you feel like you're tipping over, there's a tendency to grab on and, and hold tight. And, uh, to learn to be able to let go of that is really crucial, not just for your martial arts, but just your general health. And I'm going beyond that, even your, your sense of well being. Because if you can't turn off that stress response, that's something you're going to cling to oftentimes while you're sleeping it's you know so many people are just tight all the time and they're 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 holding on and it's a it's the first place that that the body goes whenever there's a they, they get triggered it's like ah oh, they they get tight ass they get you know clamped down and so learning to release the muscles release all that tissue there and be able to trust that it's actually going to be much, much more efficient, more stable, more powerful if it's nice and loose rather than if it's tight. And this is a, a something that that your conscious mind is going to have to implement through repetition because your body is going to want to go back to the established inherited way of, of, of doing of, uh, of responding to, to stresses, that is of tightening up. And uh, whenever you do get really familiar with that, then it becomes a thing that you don't have to think about so much. But until you get to that place, you do have to think about it. And part of the situation, part of the training for this is to put yourself into situations where you are challenged, where your, where your sense of balances is is challenged so that you are kind of get to that that mini freak out point where you want to you know, your your nervous system says we got to clamp down now and you say no no it's cool we're gonna just we're just gonna roll with this so uh, uh, so that is the story of the yao and the qua they uh, 
the Yao is the driving force. It provides the power that uh, that uh, activates the that rotation, and uh, the uh, Kua is the Yin part, and that provides you're creating space for the, the thing to move into. If you try to turn using your Yao, let's say if I'm if I'm using I'm using my Yao here to to turn to my right, right, and but I'm not letting go of my Kua. Okay, I, as I turn, if I'm not releasing here, I turn. I'm running into resistance, my own resistance as I as I try to make that 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 motion there. So the only thing I can do, and what most people do, is they just push their butt out to the side. So rather than than getting a full rotation there, they they go just a little bit, and then they they push they push to the side. They 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 move their butt to the side. We call it jutting butt syndrome and JBS because that's whenever people have that as sort of a default setting. And, you know, most of us grew up, I, I would imagine doing what I did, kind of being cool and kind of hanging out on one leg and just kind of pushing the butt out to the side there and just sort of, you know, do, 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 you know you're, you're hanging out, but the, it's not stable. But it does, if, if you do that enough, that becomes your established pattern and then you get, you get locked into that. So we're breaking habits here. We're breaking, you know, patterns that uh, are, most of them are beyond our control and until we make them in our control. So let's uh, stand up. And uh, first thing I want to do is, is to go to uh, one of the more challenging things, but it also establishes how we're going to uh, approach this on a really simple level. So why don't you stand up and ideally we're going to uh, you know, find something vertical, like a wall or a door or something like that to, to, to lean against. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here I am. I got, I'm going to put my butt against the wall. Is this better? It's maybe this door over here better. I think a little, is that a little closer? Mm -hmm. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to put one foot in front and my butt is against the wall. And this is, I'm going to have all my weight in my, my back leg, the one that's closest to the door. And the idea here is I'm going to put my, uh, um, since Actually, since my left leg, my back leg is the one that's getting the uh, most of the action, I'm going to, to put my hand in my inguinal crease, right? And the idea here is I'm going to just keep my back straight and bow forward slightly with my butt staying against the wall. So I'm bowing forward, keeping my back straight and straight, but also relaxed. So you're not tightening up your back muscles. You're just bowing forward and then come back and then just bow forward. So you can see we're, we're bending from the hip joint. So what we're trying to do, this is an issue that came up from a, a, a few people. That is, if you're, you know, some people say that, oh, if I'm, if I'm bending forward like that, my tendency is to, to round my back as I go forward, rather than come forward from the, from the claw. And the, uh, you can continue to do it. The, uh, I'll come out here with a little close. You can see what I'm doing. So I have my butt against the wall there and I'm just bowing forward, keeping my spine, my spine straight. And I'm loading up my, my the front part of my, my, my foot my weight's still in my back leg, but I'm, I'm bowing forward, and uh, the front leg's there basically just to catch me. And I'm saying, okay, what can I let go of in this position? How can I relax in this position? I'm reaching with the crown of my head, tucking in my chin, my spine straight, and what I don't want to do is this, right? The reason why we do this is that we're afraid 
of losing our balance. So we keep, oh, we'll keep, if I keep my center of mass over here, I bow forward like that, then I'm safe. But we're saying, no, no, we're going, we're going to really get precarious here. That is, I'm, I'm um, trusting in my capacity to anchor myself to my feet as I come forward with my body, with my torso. So my torso is moving as a unit. It's going like this. My back is straight, but relaxed. And all the action is happening here. I'm not forcing anything at the hip joints. I'm just releasing, I'm releasing tension. So what happens is the load goes into my legs, but that's what the legs are there for. The muscles in the legs are designed to handle big loads like that. So we do that. So just, so then sw switch legs and, and do the other one. Put your other foot forward and just, you're bowing straight forward and just relaxing into that. And then come back and then bow straight forward and see what you can let go of and do that and be able to really connect up. And here I recommend you anchor to both the heel and the ball of the foot. So you're, you're in, so your back foot, you're feeling the heel, but you're also feeling the ball of the foot and actually your big toe as well. So you're feeling along that, that, that medial line, the big toe line. Now just try it with your weight on the outside of your foot, which is where a lot of people put their weight. So just shift your weight so that you're on the outside of your foot along the little toe line, and then try to do that. And notice how your body starts to freak out. But it's not designed to go that way. It's not designed to have your body with your weight on the outside. And this is part of the problem too with the jutting butt syndrome, since that puts the weight on the outside of my foot. And if I try to come forward, then my body tenses up because it's not designed to handle that load. If the load, the body is designed so that big loads for big, big bones are there for big stresses and your big toe is the big, the big bones and it's on the medial side. So whenever you get used to just doing that, feeling that confidence uh, that you're taking it into the, the big toe line, then it becomes much easier to, to, to handle that. Okay, so moving forward, um, so that's just a very simple thing, but that shows you our, 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 our pivot point is right here, boom, okay? So we get a little more complex whenever we want to turn, because most of what we're doing in Tai Chi Chuan and, and other internal arts is rotational or spiral. So there's a, a lot of that going on. So we want to have that capacity to be able to do that. And let's just focus on Tai Chi at this point because the it's designed so that the whole torso moves as a unit, okay? And so unlike some other martial arts and a lot of movement, the, the movement's not twisting, it's rotating as a unit, okay? So we have, the shoulders and the hips align. So before we get even into the quad, just put your hands on your hips, your shoulders and your hips, and just, you want to turn your whole body, your torso is moving as a unit, okay? So in this case, my hips, my, my body, and my legs are all kind of moving together, but they're moving, so what I'm not doing is this. And so someone who hasn't studied much Tai Chi, you tell them to turn and they're, they're gonna turn, they're gonna initiate with their shoulders, almost to, to, to a person, they're gonna, they're gonna initiate with their shoulders and that's not what we wanna do. We wanna initiate with the hips, okay? So that's that. So to do that, we're using our Yao. We're saying, okay, we're using that as our pivot point and we're turning. This would be Yao. So, so as I'm doing this, I'm not using my qua so far. But that's 
we just want to just demonstrate the the importance of moving from the torso. The whole torso moves as a unit, <clears throat> and that enables us to to use our power effectively as as a whole unified system rather than a a bunch of a bunch of different parts. So we're using that as a now we're going to do it with the quad. And this time you want to put your right foot forward and put your hands on your hips and you want to feel the connection. You want to have your, your weight distributed this, for this exercise between your heel, the ball of your foot and your big toe. You want to just feel all three of those kind of really connecting to the earth, right? Pick up your back heel. So now the idea is we're going to turn to the right, but as we do that, we're going to release and allow ourselves to sink down into that right leg. So there's a softening of the muscle, the, the, the muscles there. There's a release of, of mus muscle, muscular contraction. You can actually feel into your, into your thigh, into your into your abdomen and just notice that there's nothing, not much going on there. Feel your butt and uh, notice that there's, there's no tension there either. You're outside of your leg, you wanna release that. By keeping the weight on the inside of the foot, your, the outside of your thigh is not gonna get over, overly tense. So you're just spiraling down and releasing down into that. Notice that the knee hasn't moved at all. So what's happened is, my shoulders, my hips have moved at the same time. I'm releasing down and softening and just sinking into that, into that structure. My spine is straight and I'm turning. What I'm not doing is this. I'm not twisting. I'm moving. The whole system is moving as a unit. And in this exercise, don't allow any of your weight to go into your back foot. You want to just keep it all in your front foot and returning. So you're spiraling down to the right. Now come back to center, and now we're going to spiral down to the left. Okay? And again, you want to keep that knee set. The knee's not going to move. So it may mean that you can only move an inch. And that's perfectly cool. So you just and you just turn to your left, and maybe that's all you got. That's all you can do in order to relax this. Here we're, here we're opening the quad. When we move to the right, we're closing the quad, right? We're opening, and we're settling down into that. So this, this space here, this inguinal crease, is expanding. It's, you're feeling that your spine is straight, and you're sinking down into your leg and then you turn back to center and ah, here we are again. Okay, and we spiral down to the right and we close the quad and notice what I'm not doing is this. I'm not leaning over as I turn. I'm keeping my spine vertical. My body is vertical. So if I do this, then I start to throw other things into it, including putting my weight on the outside of my foot. So I want to keep it on the inside of my foot. And as I'm turning, I'm keeping that locked in. And you feel that and just, now we go to the left and we spiral down and we load up there. We relax and release down. You feel, might feel some um, muscular activity there in your thigh. And you want that. You want, you want your, your legs to know they're getting a workout. And what that's doing is by, by the legs doing their job, they're freeing up the rest of your body to relax and to be able to do its job more efficiently. And back to center. So now we're gonna to go to your back foot. And same idea here, you wanna feel the weight in the heel and the ball of the foot and in the big toe, all along the big toe line. And you pick up the front heel.
So we're using the yao to turn. We're going to say, okay, I'm going to turn to the left. So I'm directing my body to turn to the left. My knee stays set and may not, I may not get very far, but that's, that's good. So the hips and shoulders move together. So I'm moving from the hips and to, I can't, emphasize this enough because it's something that uh, you will probably forget unless you do it a lot is that you move from the hips. So just kind of get that to, you want to really focus on that as a, you know, as um, a priority action. And turn back to center. And turn to the left. Sink. So notice that as I turn to the left, what I'm doing is I'm closing down the inguinal crease, closing the qua, and open up back to center. Now I'm going to go to the right and I'm going to open that. And I may not get very far, and that's okay. The important thing is that I open it somewhat. And then back to center. And then I open it again. And then back to center. Because just the fact of opening and closing the qua is much more important by, than how much you do it. As you practice this and you become more and more confident, more and more relaxed, and ah, when it becomes no big deal, then you find you can open up more and more and more. But to start, the important thing is not to force anything, but to just see what you can let go of. Now we're going to spiral down to the left. And so when I mean spiraling down, there's a, a tendency to kind of uh, sit down into that leg as you turn. So you're releasing the muscles down as well as rotating to, to your left in the back to center. And you're sinking down, down, down. So we're getting sung in that left leg. That is, you're, you're releasing down and you're really trusting the support of the leg to do the work for you. And back to center. Now we're going to go to the right and we spiral down to the right. Keep your center, center line vertical and knee is set. So you're opening this. So notice what happens. Whenever you do that, you're Opening this, same thing as when we're, we're like this, we're, we are pulling back the bowstring. So you're, you're creating consecrity in, this, in the structure. You're stretching your connective tissue system, which allows the energy and information to travel much, much faster through your body. And you're cranking up your chi. You're pulling back the bowstring so that you then can direct it. You can, whenever you, you use the qual to express your energy, it shoots out like an arrow. And then you spiral down to the left. You're getting yin, 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 using your yao, which is the yang impulse. Yin, you sink in there. You're relaxing down in there. And then you're loading up. And then you're oh, turning and shooting out the arrow, right? So you're sprouting down to the right and coming back, right? Now put your left foot forward and same idea here. You feel the ball of your foot, feel the heel, feel the big toe, feel that whole center line just kind of locked in. That's your support. Having that as your pivot point, as your anchor, that allows you to let go of a lot of tension. And just to prove that, just to, to get a sense of that, just shift your weight to the outside of your foot and notice how that, that security is gone. There is a, there's a tendency there to like not, not be anchored at all. There's a, your, everything above it has to tense up a little bit more just to make sure you don't fall over. And your body is kind of, Tipping, tipping to the left there, and we don't want that. We want to bring it back in, dunk, right here on the center line, 
So we're pivoting vertically around that center line. So feel the left ball set the left knee, good. Or feel the left ball and heel and toe, right? And then you set the knee and then you spiral down to the left. Whole body torso moves as a unit. So you're feeling into that and then back to center. And spiral down, releasing down, 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 soon, very settled down in there. It's if you're just kind of on a, uh, you're sitting down on a bar stool. You're just, you know, your foot's on the ground, but you're somehow you're just being supported. And then back to center. And spiral down to the right, opening the quad, releasing down, settling. Ah. And back to center. And down to the right. And back to center. And to the left. And center. Right and center. So notice that we're softening the quad, that whole area. The more confident we get that we can support ourselves to shift back and forth. So that becomes more and more confident because that ball joint there is free to do the work that it's designed to do. Whenever we get rid of the extraneous muscular tension in that area, which causes excessive wear on your hip joints. And, you know, it's something really common. People get, you know, hip problems. And this is a way, you know, to help correct that or prevent hip problems. So just by getting, so you're really confident in the body doing its job so that the hip doesn't have to compensate for that. Now go to your back foot, your right foot, pick up your left heel, set your knee. You want to feel the, the heel, the ball, the big toe on your right foot. Center up and spiral down to the right, back to center, spiral down to the left, back to center, spiral down to the right, back to center, left, back to center. And sink down to the left and hold and just feel into that. Relax your hip, relax your leg. Even though it's doing all that work, it still wants to you let go of any extraneous muscular tension. You spiral down to the right and relax that. You're closing down the quad now and you're releasing, just feeling into that. Good. Now we're going to add in that other little piece here. And we're just gonna bow straight forward. Okay, so you're feeling that angle crease here. The whole torso remains as a unit. Okay, this time the pivot point here is right at the quad and it's gonna bow forward. So it's, you're here like this and we just bow, keep your spine straight and see if you can relax in this posture. And then come back up. It doesn't have to be much. Just bow and return. Yeah, and then put your left foot back, pick your right foot forward, pick up your, you know, actually just uh, put your right foot forward and bow forward from your claw, just straight forward. And it's releasing down, relaxing into that. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, check the time. Yeah, beautiful. So let's put this into a Taiji transform. Actually, uh, let's go a specific thing where um, Israel came up with um, cloud hands as a movement. And so, so the basic idea with cloud hands, we're, we're doing this. Okay. And we're going back and forth like this. And then take a step and turn like that, right? So, so the uh, 
Um, let's nice and slow and really kind of feel into what's happening with the Kwa and the Yao as we do this. All right, so the uh, this is the way we can apply what we just what we just practice. So here we're going to feel the heel of the left foot and spiral down to the right. So you're loading you're loading up the quad and you're spiraling down to the right. So you're closing the quad as you as you do that. You're you're setting your knee and you're just just a little bit, you're spiraling down to the right, so now you can turn to the left. So we're taking the quad, and now we're opening the quad, right? And reaching out. You want to feel that. Now, you know, I'm, I'm doing this facing you so you can see exactly what's happening with my quad and everything, and, and you can adjust to, I'll, I'll give you the, uh, the names of what I'm doing, and you can make the adjustments as needed. Now feel the ball, uh, the heel of your right foot, set your right knee and spiral down to the left. So what we've done here is without much movement at all, we've just, we've now have the right leg as our substantial leg. We've gone from left leg substantial, now we feel the heel and spiral down and without hardly moving at all, we're now into the, the right leg. And we're going to turn. Okay, from the quad. So notice that my leg, my knee is not moving at all as I'm turning. My knee is still pointing straight ahead. All the action's happening from, from, from here. So as I turn, da, 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 like that, notice that my butt is not going sideways at all. So as I come across here, and then I feel into my left heel and I spiral down to the right and load up that left leg. So my quad has closed down as I spiral down to the right and then I turn. I turn to the left and reach out. And spiral down to the right. Feel the right heel, set the right knee, release the right quad, spiraling down to the right. So loading up that and then turning. Now we're going to take a step. So feel the uh, heel of the right foot and set the right knee and then spiral down to the right. So we're quads getting a little more closed as I spiral down to the right. What that does is that loads up my right leg even more. Because I want to take a step out with my left leg. And if I don't do that, if I try to step without without using my quad, I'm, all I'm going to do is is I'm going to have to uh, rock into my right leg and then step out and that uproots me. I don't want to do that. I want to uh, spiral down to the right. I want to oh, okay, load up here so that I am confident in my right leg, confident that my right leg is going to do the job, right? When I pick up my left heel, I'm going to step out to the, to the left I can stay stable in that right leg, right? I can step a little wider with my, my left leg and remain stable here, okay? Otherwise, you're gonna have a lot of trouble. If you don't have that confidence in that leg, you're gonna have a lot of trouble making this step. It's, it's gonna be clumsy, off balance. It's not gonna work. But this way, ah, we do this. And this allows us to take an empty step. We can pick up the foot and step down. We can put it back. We can step out. We can put it back. We have control over that left leg as we do this. And then we sink into the left heel. Feel the left heel sink and spiral down to the right. Loading that up. And then I turn. 
Now, I want to close down my, my right leg now. I want to make a, a, a little narrower stance. So in order to do that, I'm going to do the exact same thing here on the, on the left leg. I'm going to have to feel the heel, set the knee, and spiral down to the left. Load that up so that all, I'm really confident in my left leg now. And then I can pick up my right heel and make a nice little delicate step there, an empty step into that. And then, ah. I'll go back this way and let's, now let's go the other way, spiral down to the left. So you're loading up that left claw, sink into the left leg, spiraling down to the left, pick up the right heel. I'm gonna to step to the right now. And sink in the right heel, set the right knee, spiral down to the left, and turn. Sink into the right heel, spiral down to the, set the right knee, spiral down to the right, and step in a little bit. Boom. Left heel, set the left knee, spiral down to the right, and then turn to the left. And reach. Do your left heel, set the left knee, and spiral down to the left. You're going to step with the right foot again. So we pick up the heel and step out. Set the heel, set the knee, spiral down to the left. Loading up the right claw. Right leg is very substantial and turn. Everything nice and soft, nice and relaxed, very controlled. Set the right heel, spiral down to the right, pick up the left heel and step in. Then left heel, spiral down to the right and turn. Both hands come down. And just pause and feel into that. Feel into the chi in your hands and your arms as you're, uh, just from, from doing our cloud hands for a couple of minutes. How much energy is getting circulated throughout the whole system. Do your right heel spiral down to the left and step in. And take a deep breath. Put the balls of your feet and reach up very young and then sink into your heels and press down very yin and empty out. Throw away the chi. Please have a seat. How was that? Good, good, good. Okay. Did that address the uh, issue that you were talking about, Scott? You're on, you're on mute. You're on mute. Yeah, it's going to take some practice, but I definitely got the... Uh... I think got I the got still, uh, still, uh, I still had to really be careful. And I still had to really watch, uh, not, not, not arch on my back. I'm still arching my back because it's just a habit, I guess. Well, it, it, you know, it's like I was saying before, it's, it's your body goes into freak out and it, 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 it does that. It, it goes to that pre conscious response. It says, ah, uh, and, and so. Yeah, my recommendation is smaller steps. So, you know, we steps so that you're really 
you know, you're, it's training wheels. You know, you're you're giving your body the the message that it's safe. Nothing that a little duct tape and a steel rod wouldn't fix. <laughs> 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 no, no. He his back, so he stays straight. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Complete wrong image there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to kill him. <laughs> uh, good. A any questions on any of this or thoughts? Anything you'd like to share with the uh, the, the folks at home? The the thing that uh, really glares for me, and it's more on my right side than my left side, is it's very easy to, when I wait whichever side I'm going to, to let that butt slide out. And I have found that when, I, when I really practice that, that joint gets sore right? Because it's not used to moving that way. Um, so that's something that don't think you're doing it wrong, just because, okay, that it's not like, oh, it's super painful, but it gets a little sore. You know, after I've been doing Tai Chi for maybe a couple of hours or so, and then I stop, you know, a couple of hours later, I'll notice, oh yeah, that joint is sore, which means a good thing. It means I'm keeping it in check um but it's just like you say you know it's a lifetime of not being aware and you know so you got maybe 70 something years of, <laughs> of of doing it one way and then when you try to change it you know but i'm i'm very glad i'm aware of it even though the the product right now can it's much less sore than it used to be when i first started you know okay yeah jbs got jbs yeah so but that that's what becomes very apparent to me when doing this yes i'm grateful for the practice using um the claw and being very aware of that but i think on top of that be aware where your butt's going Always know where your butt is. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea. Uh, anybody else? Any other thoughts you'd like to share with people? One of the things that uh, occurred to me was, uh, for me, that the the way I was able to really get familiar with it was through push hands. So, you know there was a negative reinforcement when I was violating the qua principle. And uh, I was, you know, things were not going smoothly. And as I became more and more familiar with that, it wasn't just my ability to generate power to, you know, to express energy, but it was also the ability to take energy in. So just, you know, if I'm, you know, someone is pushing in on me, and I just take that and load, receive that with my claw. So I call it a, a claw priority neutralization. That is, I'm neutralizing incoming force by just taking that into my into my claw, into my leg, and and the energy would dissipate and go down my leg and wherever it goes from there. Okay. And the other thing is that as I do that, it's I'm pulling back the bowstring as I'm pulling that in. And then as I come out the other way, then I'm able to issue even more energy coming forth. And so it's something we can we can practice with each of these things. And we turn here, you know, it's like when I was learning to to uh, to box with with Master Chen, you know, the the whole thing was here. You, You'd load up by going into the qua, and then you'd come up and you'd, you'd, ah, oh, here's your coffee, and then you'd spiral down, ah, oh, here's your tea, you know, and we would do this, you know, that was our, that was our way of doing it. We would release the qua and then 
boom. But you can take it as energy coming in as well. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the push. You know, and then you're able to absorb the chi with your with your legs, with your hips, with your, you know, that your the whole system. Okay, any other thoughts? Cool. Thank you all so much. It's been great. Thank, Thank you. you Maria. Thank you, Maria. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. Bye, Maria. Thanks. Bye, Maria.